you talk about in the book about the word. And so I want to ask, um, because people are familiar with this, you know, and so, so could you just explain like, what is the word and how does that relate to music? Because I feel like that's a great key point uh, that everyone will understand and the, and the importance of power of music. So what yeah. is the word and how does that relate to music? Okay. Um, it really relates also to the creation of the universe and um, uh, different cultures all talk about the word in different ways. Like in, in Hinduism, they would call it the Om, which you can spell either O-M or A-U-M, uh, Aum. Uh, and the creation is created by um, they had a, other civilizations in, in ancient times had a concept of what we would call physics. And it was more advanced than, than people realize. They didn't talk necessarily about atoms, electrons, and so on. Um, but they knew that there would have been some kind of primordial substance everywhere, which was completely static. In terms of modern physics, you would say it, it wasn't even joined together into electrons, neutrons, and protons. It was just something. Let's call it a mystery. There was something there like a milk, you know, something. And it was everywhere, but it was completely inactive for aeons and aeons and aeons. And so the word is a way of saying, allegorically in a way, that something, and surely it was a something conscious, but something made that substance vibrate at, at different levels because the physical world is only one level of existence. Uh, the lowest level in terms of vibration, this is as low as vibration gets. Uh, so the word, I would say, is a conscious emanation and you can't leave religion or spirituality out of this. The word is a, is a conscious emanation by, from whatever word you want to use, God, the one, the supreme, the source, the good, all these kind of terms you might use. Uh, whatever the one primordial source being is, which we might call God, we live in the West, uh, whatever God is, uh, the creation began with God consciously sending forth vibratory action. And um, the reality of all of reality to me and I'm from an esoteric mystical tradition these days. Uh, mysticism is the very, very deep core of world religions or even outside of religion. But what, what reality really consists of is, I would say, put it like this. Um, if you had a sheet of paper so big it was 140 feet high and you could paste it on a wall. So you've got this sheet of paper and it's 140 feet high. And on that, it's just about big enough to make a diagram of what the universe consists of if you count all the unseen dimensions of it. So if that's the size of the whole of reality, what we are aware of, what we can see and touch around us in the physical world is probably about that much. That's how much of reality we are we're aware of. So the vibration started way above the physical world, creating the higher dimensions. And this happened in octaves. So there are seven planes of existence, but each of those planes or levels or dimensions are also subdivided into seven planes, which is like an octave within an octave. Uh, and there's octaves within octaves within octaves. Uh, going right back to the very source, the one. And one way of expressing the creation is that it came forth as the word, 
and it shook or vibrated the primordial substance into shape, uh, which is kind of demonstrated with, um, you know, you can, um, there are experiments with like with uh, Tladley plates and ways that you can have substances on a metal surface and you can play music. Uh, people often know this nowadays. Different kinds of music will shape iron filings and make them rise up into all kinds of shapes and patterns and uh, uh, geometric shapes, all kinds of things. And that's the sound acting upon substance. So some kind of um, non-physical vibration created the physical world. And in, in India, it's called the Aum or the Aum. Uh, the word, it's really um, something that the Gospel of John begins with. Uh, the Gospel of John uh, is actually a quote, I'm sure, from an earlier writing, the first verses of the Gospel. And that's where he, that Gospel begins with, um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and so on. And those first verses are a quote from an earlier ancient book, which I don't think we know what it is now. And then he goes on into the life of describing the life of Jesus as he knew it. Uh, but that's those words are interesting. That in the beginning was the word, so things began with the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now that, I was only thinking about it yesterday, the word was God. So if you and I speak and we send forth vibrations, maybe we're calling to somebody 10 yards away. Well, our vibrations from our voice will carry 10 yards and they'll hear us, but we're not in those vibrations, we're sending them forth. But John, in the beginning of his gospel, he's saying, that the word was God. Now, as a kind of a mystic, I read that as saying that God is inside and a part of the creation, that God is not separate from the creation. So um, if you pick up a stone, I'm not trying to say that the stone is thinking and looking back at you, or if you pick up a, a twig, a fallen, a fallen leaf, I'm not saying the leap is thinking intellectually and it's not looking back at you and doing mathematics or anything, but there's consciousness, a primordial consciousness within every atom. And so that's how the universe works, that, that God didn't send something out from himself and he was apart from it and he's still apart from it now. And, and this physical world works like clockwork. It's not like that. God projected a part of himself into all the dimensions right down to the physical. And there is a kind of primordial consciousness in everything. I think Hinduism agrees with that. Certain branches of it do. But um, I've, I've since come to realize calling it the word is only one way of doing it because you can also think of it as being um, let there be light. You can think of it as light uh, and light is also a vibration. So you can think of it as light being projected, but the light is not um, the way we would use a flashlight. It's not again, it's not apart from the one. Uh, the light has consciousness within it. And by light, I mean, um, many people won't know about the seven rays and so on, but in esotericism, we, we speak of seven rays, the first ray, second ray, third ray, and the rays are the formative forces uh, that form the world and uh, uh, form consciousness as well. And each ray has a, a corresponding chakra within our body. Uh, the seven chakras, it, uh, it has a color, it has a quality, such as 
uh, wisdom or love or ministration. Uh, and so the seven rays are a kind of, they're uh, a, a part of this emanation of light, but it's not just something sent forth. Uh, there's intelligence from the, from the source inside those rays. What it all boils down to, Jared, is that um, we are a part of God, but we've just forgotten it. Yes, I just, I love it. I love that. Thank you for saying all that. I just want to also add it, what I, I believe that that's the first step in the elevation of human consciousness to bring the harmony of the universe, is understanding that all things, is that reality is consciousness. Consciousness is reality. And every atom, as you said, is included in that consciousness. Mm. Uh, I think that's very important, you know. So I'm just happy you're, you're you're touching on those subjects. But I feel like that's the first step to really elevating us into this Aquarian age. Is you know, and I feel that humanity has to have consensus on at least one thing to get there. <laughs> Something I've been recently thinking. Like we must all have consensus on at least one thing because right now people really 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 want to uh you know be righteous rights and and not be in consensus and i'm right and you're wrong and this is that but it's like if we can just agree on one thing then i think <laughs> and and ideally that would be it <clears throat> you know because that all things have are part of that that's just my personal uh belief you know but yeah um I had an experience once and I was listening to a profound spiritual talk and I was in meditation when I was doing it. And um, quite apart from what was being said, I had an experience quite apart from the words. And uh, it was shown to me how every little movement I made with my body physically or every little thought I had, every even small emotion I felt had a profound impact on what was around me. And the lesson was, um, be really in control. Be aware of everything you do has an impact. That the surrounding space has consciousness and it's affected by what you do. And that was shown to me really powerfully, you know, is something that you can never forget. Yeah, intention and care, very important. So we're talking here just so people get it, just to say is, you know, because I, I like to go back, it's like, well, what is music, you know, and then typically we go to this organized sound, and then we go, well, what is sound? And then we get to vibration. So it's like if we reverse engineer, we go back to you know, what you're saying is the word, is this vibration. And then we can actually control and manipulate that purposefully how we choose. And ideally, we're choosing to do that through love or through something good that's going to harmonize uh, you know, everything around us, the planet or whatever. Um, so this is also something in the Kung Fu Music Lesson Program I teach all, all the students is, is to become a musical monk. And that's how is understanding that responsibility. And along with that, which we should talk about, is use the use of lyrics, which is also a word, literally, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and steering people's subconscious that way, because you have to understand how much power we, we have and responsibility. I always say it's like, if you have a microphone, you have power more than a politician or anyone. I have a microphone, I have an audience, I can say whatever I want. But what am I saying? That's what matters. So I am doing my best to train everybody to understand that responsibility and power and to elevate consciousness in that way. So that's what being a musical monk is all about in this program. 